Presenting Operation 5 Hollow Storm. Our biggest update yet that is full of everything you want. Five maps. Seven characters. And tons of new rewards. Go deep under Mount Kadar in an epic fight in the Locust Stronghold, Nexus. You're mine. Survive above the clouds in the towering arena of Regency. Battle for your life amongst destroyed ruins and echoes from the past in River. And two more classic maps, Gridlock, and Clock Tower. For Horde and Escape players, we're giving you the freedom to play the way you want. Pick your class, pick your character, and destroy the swarm. Operation 5 Hollow Storm has arrived. What's up everyone, it's the Razor Edge, and today I'm here to bring you guys a breakdown of the brand new Gears 5 Operation 5 Hollow Storm launch trailer. We're going to be going through the trailer and looking at all the brand new content that is being presented to us. And uh, if I skip over a few little details, it's because it was shown to us in a previous trailer, which will be linked to in the description. So if you're interested in the couple things that I may not discuss in here, but for the most part... We go over most things that are shown in here, but uh, we're going to go through all of the uh, interesting frames, discuss all the details, uh, map details, characters, all that kind of stuff. So if you guys are excited, be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and notifications on. So let's jump into this. So first up, the trailer starts stating five maps again, and it scrolls through a couple of images of familiar locations of some of the maps, uh, some old, some new, and uh, a remake in here with the significant one being river which is what's shown to us here this is the entrance to what was one of the boat houses in a gears of war 2 but it looks uh, kind of uh more posh if <laughs> it's a very uh, uh elegant looking building this time around there's some carpets in there there's a portrait uh some flags hanging but that's definitely the entrance to one of the what was the boat houses uh in gears of war 2 you can see the staircase that winds all the way around to the torque bow and sniper spawn then in the next frame uh, a very familiar location uh, which is the boom shot spawn uh, the cl uh, classically known as the boom shot spawn uh, on gridlock as gridlock is returning uh, it would spawn there i'm curious to see if they'll switch that weapon spawn out with something else besides just the boom shot this time around and then in the next frame we have clock tower returning uh, just as it was from gears of war 4 uh, with the kind of swarm pods and the nighttime setting uh, with the banks and ATM kind of theme going on there. Uh, in the very next frame, we have a close-up of Ty Kaliso in his Ram's Shadow Armor uh, holding a Retro Lancer. Fingers crossed, we'll get that Gears of War 2 Ty Kaliso skin as well. And then in the next frame, we have the close-up of the Locust Lambent Drone uh, returning from... Gears of War 4 and uh, obviously classically originally uh, brought to us in Gears of War 3 but was not playable until Gears of War 4. So this will be the second uh, Gears of War game that the Locust Lambent Drone will be uh, playable in. Then in the next frame we have a close-up of Anya Stroud. Uh, once again with a slightly different face model it looks like but this is armored Anya. So expect to see... Uh, multiple Anya variants and skins in the game as she is quite a popular character obviously um, you know being the mother of JD and uh, wife to Marcus Phoenix and just being an overall very important character to the story uh, she is very popular so I'm sure we will get a lot of skins for Anya Stroud and then we have uh, in the next frame a close-up of what I'm now surmising to be uh, the Locust Lambent Grenadier that is fully evolved. Uh, we've gotten the Lambent Grenadier uh, in Gears of War 2 
and in, uh, well, wasn't playable in Gears 2, but we got a close look at him in the Gears of War 2 campaign. And then he was first playable in multiplayer in Gears of War 4, but he was, uh, he was just kind of, he had just been infected with Lambency and it was kind of running through his, uh, uh through his body, but he had not, and mutated and transformed like the Locust Lambent drone. But I'm guessing that this is the Locust Lambent Grenadier. The more I look at it, especially uh, with the indicator being uh, his armor on his kind of like pants on his legs there. And then in the next frame, uh, a close up of the uh, Locust uh, Lambent there on guard. Super cool to see original Lambent characters in the game. But uh, you can see that his face plate's kind of shattered there and he's kind of breaking through his armor. Very, very cool. The infection is taking over on the Lambent there on there. And then we have a reverse shot of uh, one, a shot that was presented to us in the initial trailer, uh, which looks to be the uh, Lambent Grenadier, who seems to be a heavy enemy in Horde mode. So that means that there's technically Lambent Locust in Horde mode now, I'm guessing. That's kind of what it looks like to me. Um, let me know what you guys think of that in the comments down below. Is that, is that what, is that what I'm seeing? Cause he's, he's a heavy looking character there, right? Like he's taller than the drone that's right next to him. So, uh, looks like we have some locust in horde mode technically, except that's the Lambent. So that's a first. Um, and then oh, actually no, the Lambent were in Gears of War 3 horde. So that's technically not a first, but that's cool that the Lambent are going to be in Gears 5. So that's the first time the locust will be in horde since Gears of War 3. Uh, so super cool to see that. Then in the next shot, we have uh, Dizzy and Scourge in a chainsaw battle there. Uh, that shot goes very fast, so I can't really tell if that's a variant of uh, a skin for Scourge or anything like that. Uh, the, the, some of the shots look like the Gears of War 2 multiplayer version, where he has that kind of uh, that chest armor. Um, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes if that's the only variant or if we're going to be getting kind of the same version from uh, Gears of War 4 as well. And then... Uh, Obviously, the map zooms out, and the one that they're having the chainsaw duel on is Nexus, and you can actually see one of the um, one of the locust barges up on the top left, and a bunch of the uh, the the the, uh, the chambers that they keep all their prisoners in. So, like uh, Ty was kept in one of those. Baird, you actually freed Baird from one of them. Uh, you know, notoriously Maria, you you uh, rescued her from that, but obviously it was too late in the Gears of War two story. So you have the Locust Barge and uh, a lot of uh, hollow themes, but obviously with this being the Nexus, this is uh, a place of royalty in the Locust Kingdom. And then in the next uh, in the next shot, we have... Uh, I actually didn't notice this the first time. Uh, I scanned through the trailer a couple of times and only noticed this like the, the second time through. We have a callback to Gears of War 1 when Marcus and Dom uh, drop uh, the Locust Corpser into a pit of emulsion and then he comes back out to try and swipe at Marcus Phoenix like last second this is absolutely an easter egg or like homage to that so it's super cool to see uh, that that's there and that's not the only map that a corpser is present on either uh, there's also one on river so there seems to be like a corpser locust theme going on uh, with these maps definitely uh, very Gears of War 2 very hollow storm obviously fitting the theme of the operation then in the next one we have a look at uh, what looks to be probably a weapon spawn or just a, a player spawn area, which looks to be, uh, you see multiples of those towers down in the Nexus. Um, and then that's probably not the Queen's Tower, but uh, it kind of looks something like that. Um, you can see a bunch of emulsion dropping down into the lake behind them there as well. And then in the next frame, we have kind of like dual arches here. This could be the middle of the map or one of the spawn areas maybe. Uh, hard to tell you could spawn in the back there. It's kind of very reminiscent of like highway and ruins and you know the the hollow sections of uh, the Gears of War 2 campaign and then in the next frame uh, you can see more kind of callbacks to uh, Gears of War 2 with it being in the hollow those kind of uh, uh, tiered little lake areas kind of thing that you could take cover in. They're also present in Gears of War 4 as well and Gears 5 I think. I think it was Gears 4, uh, you go kind of underground for a while and you see kind of uh, locations like that. And then in the next frame we have uh, Anya Stroud uh, shooting the long shot sniper rifle there and the bullet travels across and in the very next frame it pops Scourge 
And what's interesting about that is that I'm not sure if it's just present in the trailer, um, just like maybe the, the people editing the trailer um, kind of just put this in just for emphasis on the headshot. But what I heard here was actually the classic Gears of War headshot noise from Gears of War 1. Um, so what I'm hoping is, is that they uh, have put that in the game and replaced the current headshot audio uh, with the classic. And it's not just like a, uh, an audio dub like in the trailer. If that's the case, that would be a little bit disappointing to me. But what I'm hoping is, is that if they didn't do that, that now they notice that they actually have that audio sound and that they put it in the game because that's one of the most satisfying headshot sounds in all of video games it just makes it makes using the sniper and just getting headshots in gears of war all that more addictive and then in the next frame uh, it reveals that the name of the kind of cog uh the clean cog map is called regency uh, this obviously takes place in new Ephira, uh, being the big cog settlement slash city that we see uh, in the Gears 5 campaign. And then we get another shot here. There's a statue of, uh, you know, Anya Phoenix, Anya Stroud there holding, uh, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's Anya. Uh, I would guess so since she's introduced in this, uh, in this operation. So it'd be very thematic with that. She's holding uh, a book there and it's kind of like a tribute to Anya Stroud. Obviously since spoilers, by the way, if you don't want to hear this, spoilers, she did pass away, uh, unfortunately. And uh, this is obviously kind of a, a nod to her uh, in a line of dialogue that was mentioned in the campaign. And so in the next frame, we have a look at what looks to be a another weapon spawn area or player spawn area. And it has kind of like a, a tribute to uh, the COG troops there. be interesting to see what the actual details of that memorial are. So... Very cool to see there's kind of like uh, wreaths of flowers there. You got the cog golden flag symbol um, and those soldiers are paying tribute to a dead soldier there as well. So be interesting to see what uh, what time period that's actually paying tribute to. And then uh, the trailer transitions into Ty Kaliso running through smoke and it transitions into him running down into the lower part of, uh, of River. Obviously anyone who played Gears of War 2 knows exactly what this is right off the bat. Uh, one of the ramps down into the river would be to ties right there. That's the boom shot spawn right underneath. On top of the bridge would be the classically the mortar spawn in Gears of War 2. I'm guessing that maybe um, the scorcher will spawn there in Gears 5 and maybe uh, swap off with something like the drop shot maybe or something like that. It'll be interesting to see uh, what they do with the weapon swaps. Well, maybe the drop shot will be down low. It'll be interesting to see what they do on the top middle of the bridge anyway. Maybe nades and uh, scorcher or something like that. And then uh, it transitions into, you know, showing us the name with uh, River on the overhead there. And you can see the corpse to the right. We did see this shot in the other trailer there. Um, I'm super curious if they've done anything to the layout of the map. I'm guessing they kind of have. It looks like they've, if you look at the kind of back left under the eye uh, on River there, it looks like they've made another way down into the river rather than just the ramp, and maybe it crosses over to behind the boathouse where the corpser is, maybe? That's just a pure guess, though. And then in the next frame, uh, we have another look at the corpse there. You can see more of it. So it looks like he's completely crashed through the building, so you can probably see his face kind of uh, peeking through the inside when you're actually inside that boathouse. Um, and then uh, this is classically the Gorgon pistol spawn uh, from Gears of War 2 in between those two trucks there. Um... But there doesn't seem to be kind of any particular layout changes on this side of the map. You know, you have the, the car in the middle of the laneway there. You have the van that's kind of blocking uh, one side of the bridge. You have the sandbag outside the doorways, the two trucks, uh, the little tuck-away area on the left there that goes uh, in, down to the nade house. And then in the next frame, and you have... Uh, I don't recognize this area at all. This looks kind of like a player spawn area. Uh, the, one of the spawns in uh, the Gears of War 2 version of River has a truck that's parked sideways like that. Like, you'll notice that this isn't the the side of the map that has the, the two trucks parked beside each other. This looks like the player spawn area, maybe. Uh, but then the sandbag at the back there, I can't tell if that's just, like, cosmetically there and you can't hop over it. Or if this is, like at the back of one of the boathouses that maybe they made an area where you can run straight through it uh, to make the map kind of um, 
that you can run around sort of uh, that way that your only option isn't to run straight at the boathouse which would be clever um and then in the next frame we have uh we have Ty Kaliso doing a bag and tag to the uh locust grenadier or the locust lambent grenadier excuse me um what i'm do you know what i can't recall could you do the bag and tag in gears of war 2 or was it first introduced in Gears of War 3? My memory has started to get a bit hazy with some of the legacy games over the years. So, um, I actually, I don't think I've ever seen anyone actually do the bag and tag in Gears 5. So let me know, is this, uh, has this been in the game the whole time? I actually haven't done it ever. I never, ever do it. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't think I did it in Gears 3. I don't think I did it in Gears 4. I think I might've like just thought to myself, wait, I've never done this. Let me actually try and use this mechanic. Um, but it's like it's never it's never good to use in any situation really because it's always like too slow and you end up getting bodied anyway but i'd be i'd love to see someone actually get like a nice cluster kill with the with that mechanic anyway that's a whole nother story and then it transitions into uh, the grenadier getting knocked across the screen and it shows that gridlock is officially back obviously we saw that early in the trailer um and cosmetically it is exactly the same as Gears of War 4. I would have liked to have seen them maybe make it nighttime or something like that. I understand that Gridlock and Clock Tower are in here as kind of, you know, they're just trying to flesh out the number of maps in the game, so I totally understand. Uh, you know, we have uh, River, Regency, and Nexus, but, uh, you know, Gridlock and Clock Tower are just thrown in there because they're good maps and uh, you know, it adds a number and just keeps the keeps things fresh for the game. Uh, I understand that gridlock is kind of controversial amongst people. Some people really hate it and some people love it. I I'm on the kind of um, I'm indifferent to it. I like gridlock, uh, but I also understand people's uh, people's gripes with it. But I like playing guardian on it. I like playing uh, you know execution on it. I'd love to play gridiron on it at some point and see what that's like. Um, but I'm just happy to have more maps in the game at the end of the day. But let me know what you guys think of Gridlock coming back in the comments anyways. And then it transitions into, you know, the Grenadier continuing across the screen and showing Clock Tower just as it was uh, from Gears of War 4 with the swarm pods there. And then in the next shot, we have uh, what I'm guessing is one of the spawn points in Nexus. And this is a very big Gears of War 2 callback. This is one of the uh, the drop pods that one of the Derricks sends down into the Hollow uh, during Operation Hollow Storm in the Gears of War 2 campaign. Marcus and Dom, you know, famously drop down in those and uh, they save, go to save Carmine and, you know, lay siege to the uh, Locust Nexus and all that kind of stuff. And you see a bunch of these dropping down at multiple points during the Gears of War 2 campaign. And uh, obviously this being a kind of a an indicator for Horde mode with the Fabricator there and the fact that Dom... And every character is now playable in Horde mode. Um, and going into the next frame, we have uh, another shot of the uh, drop pod in the back there. On the, uh, in what I'm guessing is Nexus. This looks like maybe one of the, maybe like Cog spawn versus Locust spawn. If you know what I mean, the Cog would spawn on the side with the drop pods. That would make sense. Uh, but we have Anya Stroud uh, being highlighted with the Protector class there. Uh and then in the next shot, we have uh, what looks to be the uh, the UIR soldier in Escape, as he is now playable in Escape. A couple of these shots are out of order, I just realized. Sorry about that. And then we have uh, a look at the class system, which, uh, you know, all of the... Basically, all these classes have been separated from all the characters in the game. So if you want to play as Demolitions, as Marcus, JD, Carmine, whoever, you can play any of the characters you like as any of these classes. So you've, you've complete free reign to do whatever you want with any of these. So that's cool. You have the promotional characters, support, assault, and tank. And then uh, we have a big group shot of the, uh, you know, it's basically highlighting that characters now can use uh, whatever abilities on whatever character. So you have the UIR soldier with the silver back there, which is the pilot class. You have... Um, what looks to be Academy Anthony Carmine there uh, using uh, Kate's class. I forget what her class is called. Um, and then you have uh, Dom using uh, the the, the, uh, the Scorcher or whatever class that was called. Uh, you know, the train, Coltrane's class. And then you have Sam there. And then you have the DB using, uh, using Baird's class there as well, which is cool. So yeah, a lot of variety there in classes. 
Uh, you have uh, in the next shot, you have uh, Academy Anthony using the cloak ability there on one of the swarm uh, grenadiers. And then in the next shot, you have uh, Sam Byrne using uh, the Electro Blade. By the way, her name is Sam Byrne. A lot of people say Brian for some reason. Uh, so she's using Electro Blade there, which was Lonnie's ability. And then in the next shot, I don't know the significance of this. Uh, it just shows the Countess doing the the Shaman uh, the shaman thing. I'm guessing that... Oh, now that I think of it, this is probably going to be an expression for the Countess. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Because um, otherwise, this shot doesn't make a whole lot of sense, other than the Countess is... Uh, Kind of significant to Hollow Storm and Gears of War 2 because that's the first game you saw them in. So maybe there, this is the uh, Locust Shaman expression. He'll be able to do his scream and you'll be able to use it whenever you want in versus multiplayer. And then in the next shot and the final shot of the trailer, we have Dizzy uh, walking up to the screen and shooting the Scorcher, uh, you know, at everybody in the audience kind of thing, um, which uh, signifies, you know, obviously the return of the Scorcher. Uh, the first weapon to ever return or be brought in during the lifetime of a Gears of War game in Gears of War history. I would love to see more of this going forward. Please, 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 guys, if you want to see more of that, let the Coalition know, you know, uh, let them know you want to see Breach Shot, uh, Bushka, that kind of stuff. If there's a massive demand, uh, maybe the Coalition will get given the resources they need to make that happen. Um... Obviously, they have said that they have quite a small team working on the game. Um, but I hope that, you know, if fan demand is strong enough, that we'll be able to make stuff that we want to happen, happen. And then, uh, you know, the very final shot of the trailer is Operation 5 Hollow Storm, available November 17th. So I'm pretty happy with what this trailer showed us. If, Like I said, if I skipped over any other details... Um, of some stuff it's because we had a shorter version of this trailer previously so I'll link i'll leave a link to that in the description if you guys want to check that breakdown out as well uh but a lot of stuff in here um i'm as much as it could be it might be or might not be happening the the classic headshot noise has me very very excited uh i'm particularly excited for nexus that's going to be such a gears of war 2 nostalgic throwback but it's also a brand new map and a brand new experience for horde mode and versus. And then, uh, you know, it's got that it's got that uh, that corpse are dipped in emulsion on it as well. And then, uh, obviously, you know, how long has it been since River came out? Two thousand eight, twelve years. You know, that's a that's a long time to wait for a multiplayer map to show up in a game again. So super happy to see that uh, make a return. And then we have Regency, which I'm super curious to see. Uh, how that plays out and then obviously you have clock tower and gridlock thrown into the mix as well as all the characters and content that are coming in operation five and the class being separated and all that kind of stuff but anyways that's enough chit chatting let me know what you guys think of the op five trailer and all the content we've seen here in the comments down below did i miss anything uh, that i didn't mention maybe in the previous trailer or this trailer let me know in the comments down below what are your thoughts on the maps characters all that kind of stuff but if you guys and enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to my channel with notifications on so you don't miss any future Gears of War content. Share the video around if you really enjoyed it. Follow me on Twitter at the Razored Edge. Discord link in the description if you want to chat and play Gears of War with me whenever. And uh, make sure you guys click the join button below the video if you guys want to uh, learn how to become a channel member and help support me uh, to keep creating videos long into the future. But that's been it, guys. I will see you all next time.